uh, this is second in a series of lectures I've organized for you on litigation in education law. Um, that's the Supremes playing in the background. Um, different group of Supremes in the Supreme Court, Court of Canada, but I find, um, I find it's good to start off with a song. So, um, this particular lecture I'd like to um, discuss with you some concerns you might have uh, around harassment in the workplace, bullying of teachers in the workplace, you know. Um, I think that this is something that we really don't discuss very often, and yet I th it, 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 it's kind of, um, it, well, it's a big deal, folks. Um, you know, uh, we have Bully Awareness Week uh, in Alberta, it's even in our legislation here, uh, you know, in health classes, in all your different classes, uh, you know, throughout the year you're going to be uh, discussing bullying with your students. Uh, you know, we have bully awareness programs in schools. Uh, you know, every school has kind of policies on bullying. Some schools have a zero tolerance for bullying. You know, but, and, and you know, then you... you you know, there's there's tons written on bullying, right? On the effects of bullying on students. Uh, there's tons written, even about how, you know, teachers bully students. Uh, but, you know, uh, when I sat down to think about this, I just did a search at the local university here uh, in their um, school library, and uh, I checked the books and I checked the articles. There's hardly anything on how teachers get bullied you know um, uh, parents can be horrible bullies sometimes most parents are wonderful you know but now and again uh, you know this happens you, you'll get a parent who comes after you and you know with no good reason or, or even if there's the seed of a reason uh, you know, that in some way, you know, you may have done something or failed to do something. It's just the, the way that the teach the, the, the parent deals with it is way out of proportion or, or it's just so intolerant or so full of hate. Uh, you know, parents can bully, uh, you know, uh, students bully teachers. Um, and there's little, there's little written on it. Um, I, I couldn't find hardly anything um, in the scholarship on this subject. Um, there's a, there, there are a fair bit of, um, there's, there's newspaper articles, there's, there are a number of blogs on it. Um, when you become a teacher, you're sure going to find parent, um, uh, fellow teachers who can talk to you about it, who have, have experienced it. I've, I've experienced it. Uh, I mean, it, 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 it only happens rarely, right? But it can happen. And, um, you know, unless, and it can be hurtful. It can be really hurtful to you, right? Um, and, and as, you know, at a certain level, you have to develop a, a kind of a thick skin as a teacher. You're always under the, under scrutiny from others. And, um, one of the things um, that's important to remember when you're feeling like a parent is harassing you or bullying you. Um, just, I mean, it's it's really hard to at the time when you're being victimized by somebody, but to try to have compassion, I don't know, it, it sounds offensive in a way, but you, you, you have to try to have compassion for the person who is attacking you um, like often I mean not always like some people just are smug right they think that teachers are only teachers because they can't do anything else or you know they, they have a really low opinion of teachers and so that's why they treat you with such contempt um, but some people will treat you terribly as parents um, simply because when they were kids in school, teachers treated them terribly. And so whenever they see you or whenever they see any teacher, all they can see is that horrible, 
teacher or horrible set of teachers that they had who didn't understand them, who mistreated them. And it doesn't seem like no amount of reason is, is, is going to uh, change that opinion of teachers in their minds. So, uh, you know, and, and now <coughs> you have the added problem uh, of the internet, right? Um, there's so many new, just like, you I mean, when you talk about uh, Bully Awareness Week or anti-bullying campaigns and this, and, and, you know, we talk about cyberbullying and all the horrible things that happen to kids. Um, these things happen to, to teachers now, too. Um, you know, teachers are cyberbullied. <clears throat> teachers, um, you know, kids get their, I mean, we're all supposed to be pleased that kids have technology and embrace technology and the rest of it in our classrooms. Okay, kids take out their phone and they hold it under the desk and they film you. You know? And things get taken out of context. Uh, you get caught saying something in the heat of a moment or uh, you get, you know, something that you said that there's nothing wrong with gets the way it's filmed, it it gets turned around, um, and then it goes on the internet, and then things happen to you. Um, the these are these are real um, serious concerns. I don't I don't know that they're necessarily being taken very seriously right now. Just given what I've seen from in the scholarship, I don't see a lot on it. So I thought I would just read with you um, a few example commentaries from newspaper articles, from um, teacher blogs, and also, <coughs> you know, some court cases in which this thing, this sort of issue is, has come to court and what's happened uh, when parents are held accountable for the terrible way that, you know, the very few of them, but occasionally from time to time, treat teachers. So here's a article called Bullying the Teachers from the Globe and Mail from 2012, a few years ago now, Margaret Wente. Um, imagine you're a school vice principal. One day, a parent complains that the grade 5 supply teacher made her son take a squishy banana out of the garbage can and eat it. How do you react? Do you, one, ask the parent if the kid might be exaggerating? Or two, ask the teacher for her side of the story. Or three, suspend the teacher, send her home, report her to the school board, and call child welfare authorities. Obviously, the right answer is three. Surprised? Don't be. These days, you can't be too careful. The teacher in this case, Susan Dowell, has 15 years of experience in the school system. She spent a month at home on partial pay while the Child Children's Aid Society investigated her. She wasn't even told what she was supposed to have done. The union warned her that the police could show up at her door any day. The CAS eventually exonerated her. Children are getting a lot more savvy these days, Miss Dowell told the CBC's Kathy Tomlinson, who reported the story last month. It used to be, make the occasional substitute teacher cry. Now they know they can have you suspended. For the record, <clears throat> her version of the events is that the boy and his friends were acting up in class, so she spoke sternly to them. Later, when she saw the boy throw his uneaten banana into the garbage at lunchtime, she told him to eat it or take it home. His parents paid good money for fruit like that. That's the comment that she made. Miss Dowell's story is bizarre, but no longer rare. Across Canada, more and more teachers are being removed from the classroom because of allegations of abuse. Many, if not most, of these cases are dismissed for lack of evidence. Nobody knows for sure, because nobody keeps records. Teachers often spend weeks or months in limbo before they're cleared. It's nuts, says John Bradley, an education professor at McGill University who has written on this subject. Many accused teachers feel embarrassed and many are in a state of shock. Like, apart from the falsity of it, just put yourself in the shoes of the teacher when this happens, right? Like, how horrible 
you were made to feel. How Can you imagine the anxiety? Can you imagine the fear? Can you imagine, you know, all the, uh, all the ways that this besmirches your reputation? Just, just the load of anguish that's foisted upon your shoulders as a teacher when these sorts of accusations are, you know, leveled against you. You know? Um, you know, and, and all it took, all it would have taken would be for that principle to ask, so what happened? But no, right? Just jump to the worst case scenario and this is what happens. So, uh, Wente goes on, in the bad old days, teachers' abuse of students was often covered up. <clears throat> now the pendulum has swung so far the other way that common sense has all but disappeared. Here, um, if later on when we're talking about freedom of expression um, in court cases and that sort of thing, teachers' freedom of speech and freedom of expression, one of the court cases I'll discuss with you, uh, one of the cases is uh, Jim Keegstra, this, this uh, anti-Semite um, who taught here in uh, Alberta in a place in a little town called Eckville. And <clears throat> one of the fellows that um, we'll discuss is this, uh, who wrote a book on this, is uh, David Berkison, an excellent historian, an Order of Canada winning historian. Um, and and he, he talks about how, um, <clears throat> you know, back in the old days, this was actually the case that, um, you know, teachers bad behavior, uh, you know, was covered up. But ever since Keekstra, really, um, this demand for accountability, uh, this mistrust of teachers, the abuse of, of uh, teachers, um, or teach, rather teachers' abuse of their freedoms, um, you know, is, is um, just almost assumed. And it, it, there's been this incredible swing. There's been this incredible swing now in education over in the other direction. Education is like that, ladies and gentlemen. It, it's, it, 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 it's a thing of extremes. Uh, we move in one direction and that, you know, we, we force everybody to do that for a long time and that's the way it is. And then the bad things about that cause us to overreact very often and we swing back in the other direction. Uh, and then that's equally extreme. And then it takes a while for anybody to find the happy medium, right? <coughs> so Wendy is saying, now the pendulum has swung so far in the other direction that common sense has all but disappeared. <clears throat> Joel Westheimer, research chair in education at the University of Ottawa, blames an overall decline of respect for teachers, as well as what he calls the criminalization of disciplinary activities in schools. We have a climate where people are not allowed to exercise the professionalism they're paid for, he says. When the kids get in a fight, the school calls the police. He also blames parents for automatically taking their kids' side and school administrators who are so spineless that even a piece of fruit can make them run for cover. <clears throat> like I know of a case in a charter school here in uh, Calgary where, you know, parents, uh, um, they were dis they were upset that um, the teacher um, had taught their, 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 their child... Um, Bed mass, uh, incorrectly, uh, and then they went to the they went to the principal, and they they complained about the teacher who was you know brand new, and rather than find out from the teacher or uh, what was going on, rather than ask the teacher, the brand new teacher, for his or her um, explanation of what had gone on rather than find out that that teacher actually had been instructed on how to teach bed mass by the um, the uh, math head and that you know therefore there was some responsibility that should have been investigated there they just fired the teacher immediately just fired them they, you can do that in a charter too because there's termination without cause uh, clause in in um, most charter school contracts and um, but this this is this is it right? Uh, just absconding administrators just absconding on their responsibility uh, to be respectful and conscientious, uh, you know, do their due diligence with teachers to find out the the, the real story. Miss Dowell argues that there should be consequences for students who make false allegations. Right now there are none. The obvious lesson is that they can get away with 
anything. Meantime, teachers are presumed guilty until proven innocent. What's worse is that accused teachers like Miss Dowell are never really cleared. She can expect no apology and no public explanation from the school to her colleagues, the students, and their parents. As well as being investigated by child welfare, Miss Dowell was also investigated by the school board. But when I called the board to ask if she'd officially been cleared of the wrongdoing, they refused to tell me. We can't comment on personal matters, the official said. <sighs> right? I mean, again, this particular lecture, I don't want it to depress you, I don't want it to alarm you or fill you with fear, but I don't want you to go in not knowing that these things can happen. Uh, and not being aware in some sense of these shifts in law and our attitudes towards teaching, uh, towards teachers, towards responsibility and accountability in education, because there has been a definite shift, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> uh, the modern reality, the idea of a parent as bully, like so many other... Um, this is from bu the bullyingeducation.org website, by the way. Uh, the idea of a parent as bully, like so many other adult bullying issues, can seem, seem absurd at first. I mean, we all know those helicopter parents who feel it is their right to intervene in every aspect of their child's life and education, but how does this constitute bullying? It's the parent's job to advocate for the child's well-being and make certain that the child is given every opportunity possible to succeed especially in cases of special needs children who are at a decided disadvantage as compared to the rest of the class, right? <clears throat> I agree, says this blogger. I agree that parents who are involved in the educational process can be an asset to their child and the classroom environment, but when that involvement is born of entitlement for that parent's child above all else and to the detriment of others, the involved parent can become a bully parent. Often, especially in the case of special needs situations, we are afraid to call the zebra a zebra, but the actions of a parent exist independently of the child, of the, cir uh, of the circumstances of the child, no matter how hard those circumstances may be. The fine line. As educators, we walk a fine line between surrogate parent and authority figure, professional and employee. Because we are paid for our duties, there is an expectation of service and results, and this attitude is exacerbated in private and higher educational environments where tuition is paid. But really, any taxpayer these days has a stake in the public school system, and most have no problem asserting it. In addition, the nature of education as a graded system meaning that payment does not ensure success, puts us straddling a line between <clears throat> the different realities of entitlement and achievement. With special needs students, their additional requirements, though ensured through the Individuals uh, with Disabilities Act and their IEPs, we call those IPPs out here in Alberta, still set them apart. A parent who struggles with the reality of the challenges presented by a special needs child may find that lashing out at those supposed uh, supposed to help normalize this child is her only recourse for the endless frustrations that parenting that child can create. Also, the atmosphere of parent as advocate within the special needs community can be taken to the extremes in the wrong hands. So, I have a few court cases we'll look at in another lecture um, that give you an example of that sort of thing. Personally, me as a teacher, I've never encountered <coughs> that kind of uh, hostility really um, um, on the part of, um, you know, parents who have special needs or, uh, you know, uh, children or students with disabilities. Um, I mean, I've had students who've had disabilities, whose parents have been concerned and worried about how their, their child's doing and whether or not, you know, uh, in this or that particular instance, I've offered them adequate supports and that. But um, I never really had it happen as like a bullying thing. This person sounds like, however, um, that's more an area in which they've encountered uh, certain hardships. How bullying, or how, how parent bullying occurs. It's the very nature of the involved parent that actually sets the stage for teacher-directed harassment and bullying. With the increase of email communication, social network interaction, and the ever-present nature of town gossip, 
Feelings of personal affront can be taken to the masses with ease and quickly become libellous if unchecked. You know, you can have it where a parent will will phone you on the phone or sit down with you at a parent-teacher interview and, and he or she will say, you know, we were all at the hockey game, all us parents, and we were talking about you and the way that you teach our children and stuff, right? And, you know, the insinuation is is that you're some kind of a horrible um, teacher or that you're, you know, I don't know. Um, and so gossip is one of these things that um, is um, is quite troublesome when you're a teacher. You have to deal with it. Uh, gossip is one of those things that I guess is in every workplace job, but um, it can be particularly trying and, and um, hard on you as a teacher. In extreme cases, teachers are contacted by bully parents daily subject to continual unannounced visits and expected to treat the bully's parents' child with extra care in order to better reflect the success that parents expect. A bully parent will not see grading flaws as her child's, but as the teacher's. The bully parent will question the teacher's curriculum and assignment choices, grading techniques and qualifications. He may complete his child's homework himself and expect the teacher to accept the submission as the child's own, all in an effort to elevate his child's <clears throat> his child above the rest of the class. Yeah, I've I've had that happen. Um, the the need for research, the research on parent bullies is slim pickings to say the least. When I entered, oh, this person the same as me, right? When I entered the term parents bullying teachers into Google, majority of the results were bullying resources for parents and teachers. As a teacher, as well as an SEO. Um, that is one who writes for search engine results. Uh, this disturbed me uh, more than on more than one level because it says two things: no one is honestly discussing the issue of pa uh, parent bullies, and no one cares. How the internet changed the game. What makes this lack of research problem even worse is that all the anecdotal information that I could find about the parent bully issue. Uh, revolves around how the internet has made bullying behavior easier than ever. Nowadays, teachers give their email addresses to parents in an effort to open lines of communication. And many schools offer services that post grades online as, semester, as the semester and year progresses. See, that doesn't necessarily... It's not necessarily a bad thing that grades are posted online so that, that you can be viewed in real time. Like, every school I've ever worked in has that. And it can actually be a good line for open communication so that parents can and you can you can they can keep on top of things and they're well informed of what's going on and you can leave messages for parents on there and like it can be good but i i also get how um you know it, it can also become a, almost like a fetish to be always always 24 7 checking your kids grades checking and seeing and um it can, you know, in the, in the wrong hands or approached the wrong way uh, by a parent, it, I could certainly understand this person's position. For the concerned, engaged parent without much time, this is a godsend. However, for the parent bully, 24-7 communication channels offer an environment ripe for harassment. Yes, this is very true. No matter the circumstances or justification that a parent bully has for his or her actions, the fact that this behavior can continue to occur outside of school through online channels increases the stress on the teacher victim. Stress is a good word. It's, it's an understated word, ladies and gentlemen. The attitude of the parent bully contributes to the teacher's satisfaction with her job, affects the rest of the class, and ultimately shortchanges the child whom the parent bully was trying to protect because it steals away reality by sheltering him. All very good points on the bullyingeducation.org website. Okay, here's, here's a CBC News um, posting by Robert Schmall, um, who is a um, seasoned teacher, holds a degree from McGill uh, and Queen's Universities, as well as the Royal Military College. He's taught for the past 15 years, elementary, high school, in Toronto. His article is entitled, A Teacher Speaks Out on Students Bullying Teachers. So this is spoken from the heart, folks. It's anecdote, but it, it's valuable. It's one man's um, experiences, right? 
We assume it only happens to naive substitute teachers and to those new to the profession, but students bullying teachers, often referred to as teacher-targeted bullying, is quickly assuming endemic proportions and is preventing a growing number of teachers from doing their job. So here we're not talking necessarily about parents bullying teachers, but actually students bullying teachers. A 2005 survey conducted by the Canadian Teachers Federation revealed that 35% of teachers had witnessed a student physically assaulting or intimidating a teacher. The same study found 60% of teachers had been seen uh, had, had seen a student verbally abusing a teacher at a level more than just an angry exchange. In Ontario, the statistics are even more disturbing. A recent survey commissioned by the Catholic and Public Teachers Unions in this province stated that bullying of teachers by students is more prevalent than any other form of bullying. Overall, almost 40% of teachers in this province reported having been bullied by their students. Of this group, the most severely affected are the intermediate grades 7 through 9 teachers, where 50% reported having been bullied by their students. Why are teachers being bullied so much? To answer this, we have to look at what I call the three problem P's. Permissiveness, parents, and principals. I entered the teaching profession indoctrinated in the belief that young people today have changed. <laughs> this is all through Alberta too. 21st century learning and the 21st century student and kids these days are different than any other. You know, you, you actually, it's you have to believe that now when you talk with principals, when you go to PDs, when you even when you go through your pre-service training, this is hammered into you, hammered into you, hammered into you. If you speak up on it, you look like you're some kind of Neanderthal, right? He says this is not true. The basic moral fabric of the child or adolescent today is fundamentally no different than it was in 1978, 1958, or 1908. Instead, it's our society's attitude and moral guidance that have undergone a fundamental transformation, and he thinks for the worse. Now, maybe not in every single way for the worse, right? There's lots of things probably, I mean certainly, that are better about our ideas and our attitudes today than they were in 1908. I can think of many things, right? But he's saying in this particular instance, things aren't as good. In our attitudes towards teachers, things aren't as good. <coughs> defy authority. We give our children a license to irresponsibly question and defy authority and we call it empowerment. In the past, empowerment was more linked directly to maturity, meaning you had to learn the responsibility that came with the exercise of power. While challenging authority may be necessary at times, it comes at a cost. All too often, belligerent students and students who bully have no appreciation of what that cost might be. Very true. <clears throat> Parents need to understand that to care does not necessarily mean to coddle. When it comes to teaching, respect, and self-restraint, this generation of parents seems all too willing to defer their obligation to teach basic civility to a mean-spirited, materialistic, secular society where indulgence and instant gratification are seen as the mark of success. Yeah, I, I kind of agree there. Uh, but, you know... Um, I mean, I don't think that, I would never want to suggest that, you know, kids should be automatons or just submit to authority. Uh, you know, uh, it's good to question authority and, and why things are uh, rules and, and, you know, but that doesn't mean that um, all rules are bad or, or that, uh, you know, there should be no, no um uh, repercussions for for uh, disobedience or for for uh, not not following rules, right? Um, and I mean the other thing too. I I think I agree. I don't know what I make of you know the secular society thing, but um, you know uh, this author this this teacher's comments about the need to teach respect and self restraint. <clears throat> In my experience teaching high school, uh, mostly. Um, I can tell you that really that seems to be the biggest part of your job. I mean, you have all the curricular things that you have to teach, but um, in the grand sense, 
you know, very much of what you do is 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 trying to encourage kids to be to to exercise self restraint to you know to not to have like you know have a filter between their 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 minds and their and and their mouths uh you know to to recognize that what they say and what they do uh you know can have quite serious negative effects in the world uh as well as positive effects and you know um a lot of kids don't necessarily um come to school with the tools or the understanding of that and and so you know probably one of the more important ways in which kids you know are educated by us in our in in our classrooms is you know in the daily ways in which we help them learn self-restraint but again i mean perhaps you know being mean-spirited self-interested self-indulgent materialistic you know always concerned for my success over everyone else's success i mean obviously these things you know if this is if this is the way that our society's moving and you know i'm not disagreeing with this author you know that will have an effect on how teachers are treated too right when discussing student bullying uh students bullying teachers a colleague of mine aptly summed up the attitude of principals as work to rule citing new progressive discipline legislation or issues seemingly beyond their control principals seemingly uh seem increasingly reticent to deal with students and the students know it um effective referrals to the principal's office are becoming increasingly problematic older retired teachers i have spoken to are shocked at the degree of due diligence needed to get the office to do something with an abusive disruptive student yeah i've i've experienced that too incident reports phone calls and letters to parents along with detentions are frequently required before what often amounts to a mere slap on the wrist can be administered at the office the disciplinary brick wall that was once the principal's office has been replaced by a speed bump i think that that's pro- that's quite true in my experience too uh teachers myself included cannot do it alone i simply cannot confront the belligerent abuse of student in my class in the same no nonsense manner i may have once confronted such behavior on the street or at the local pub but knowing that i cannot fight i cannot flee either so that teacher feels really um this teacher who's writing this feels really disempowered in his job right getting away with it is the final little passage out of his his um article in the cbc news where don't let their advocates fool you students who bully teachers know they are doing something wrong time and time again i've seen alleged misguided behavioral students who intimidate and bully teachers work at their part-time jobs in the community showing all manner of courtesy to managers and customers these students know where they can prey on authority and get away with it and it's not at the local fast food restaurant frankly i have to admit that we teachers are also partly to blame for this problem all too often the mark of professionalism as teacher me is teacher as a teacher means on an individual advocacy level keeping your mouth shut shut and taking on a level of abuse that would never be tolerated in any other profession we teachers are often prone to rationalize the abuse we receive from students you know i think yeah i mean okay you also recognize right he's he's young right you recognize that the child is young that maybe they have a hard life at home you know i don't know that it's necessarily rationalization it may be your attempt as a teacher to try to uh have some compassion for this person who's victimizing you right or mistreating you um you know so i don't know whether i necessarily agree with everything that's being said here but i i do i do understand uh the pain that the teacher is is expressing here well you know johnny is stressed because his parents are going through a divorce that's why he's abusing me or you've got to understand that susie is frustrated because she's not she did not get accepted into college that is why she's always calling me a uh, so and so so where is this problem heading constant or costly absenteeism and therapy aside teachers are trying to adjust as they always seem to do to the new challenges in their classroom meaning they will be teaching less and managing 
more. So that's one view, folks. Um, it's kind of a bleak view, but I mean, I don't think that the person is being dishonest or, or, or alarmist. I think that this, this teacher is probably speaking from a good deal of experience, uh, a good deal of personal pain. Don't forget, too, that, I mean, with regard to him saying that we're partly to blame, I mean, sometimes <clears throat> teachers who have become teachers um, themselves when they were young perhaps were bullied, right? And, <clears throat> I mean, maybe when you get to be a teacher and you're older and you were egregiously bullied, maybe one of the ways that you learned to escape from being bullied was to be quiet, to, um, you know, to subside into the background as much as possible and maybe turn the other cheek or, 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 or uh, let, let things ride out, not, not kick up a fuss. And, you know, so some teachers maybe maybe they enter the profession with that kind of a survival mechanism already in place for themselves. And obviously it doesn't work very well as a teacher because there's nowhere you can hide as a teacher. You are always front and center as a teacher, right? Um, but I don't know. I, don't, I think that probably the best thing that could be done uh, is, you know, to, for, for this sort of problem to become more spoken about in society uh, maybe even have PDs where people can talk about this where uh, you know schools come up with not just a policy for anti-bullying student to student uh, or you know but but actually like what are we going to do as a as a as a staff uh, to make sure that you know this sort of thing isn't tolerated against our staff or how can we support each other those sorts of things um, I think that more of this needs to happen in schools. So I have a question for you as teachers in training. How will you handle things when you're bullied or mistreated at work by parents, students, other teachers, or administrators? This is something you could discuss easily as a class together. Okay, um, <clears throat> this is taken from uh, the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario website. It's all about workplace harassment and bullying. Increasingly, Bullying at the school level is becoming a concern not only as it affects students, but also as it affects teachers and other education workers. These school employees experience aggressive behavior from students, parents, colleagues, and school administrators. The ETFO and other teaching federations are seeking a number of actions to address the problem, including policies at the school board level and amendments to the Employment Standards Act and the Occupational Health and Safety Act. So what is workplace bullying? Bullying is a form of harassment and a form of violence in the workplace. Bullying or harassment can be based on the grounds set out in the Human Rights Code, or it can be a form of psychological or personal harassment apart from the Human Rights Code. Often, Bullying and harassment are manifestations of abuse of power. Yes, it is objectionable, object, objectionable conduct or comment directed towards a specific person which serves no legitimate work purpose and creates an intimidating, humiliating, hostile, or offensive work environment. So they did a member survey, uh, a survey entitled Bullying in the Workplace, uh, and they found that over half um, of elementary and secondary teachers have been personally bullied during their professional careers. About 1 in 15 teachers have been a target of physical violence while teaching. Aggressive behavior on the part of students is the most common form of bullying reported. 36% of those surveyed have been bullied by students. The highest incidence of bullying by students is among intermediate teachers. Bullying by parents is the second most prevalent form of bullying, with 36% of teachers working in elementary school and 22 in secondary school. Bullying by administrators or colleagues is less likely to be reported formally. But I wonder how common it is, even though it's not reported formally. Uh, teachers who have been bullied by administrators are most likely to take time off work and to take the longest time off. Yeah. And you know, I mean, 
I've had a little bit of experience with this, and uh, when I was having difficulty at one of my schools, where um, a colleague of mine was, uh, who had a position of power over me was um, not treating me well at all, um, I just phoned the ATA to ask, uh, and they, you know, they gave me a bunch of options, but the option that they pushed most on me was change schools. Uh, there were all other legal and litigious actions, but the one that they 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 pushed most was changing schools. And so um, I don't know um, how um, amenable that is to you, or how you feel about whether or not that's a wonderful solution. I don't know that it necessarily solves anything. It definitely doesn't stop that person from doing the same thing to other people. Uh, it's kind of escaping or running away. But, you know, in a sense, I understand why the ATA would recommend that as, as the best course, the most uh, uh, practical course of action, you know, in, in such a circumstance. Um, you might ask your ATA or your union um, when you become a teacher um, for advice if ever you um, encounter these difficulties. The survey also underscored that the personal consequences of bullying include absences from work, increased fear, loss of sleep, loss of self-confidence, anxiety, appetite loss, depression, severe panic attacks, loss of appetite. Oh, I just um, said that, sorry. Our most prevalent reactions when bullied by an administrator. And definitions of harassment. Uh, schools are workplaces governed by the Occupational Health and Safety Act. Under that legislation, School board supervisors and administrators must take every reasonable precaution in the circumstances to protect all workers, including teachers, in the school setting. Recent studies have shown that teachers are subjected to a vast range of abusive treatment from students, including verbal assaults, physical assaults, threats, damage to property. Teachers may also be harassed by parents, colleagues, managers. This type of harassment may consist of verbal abuse, threats, belittling or humiliating, vague gestures that intimidate or threaten, ostracism, isolation, inequitable harsh treatment, excessive monitoring, denial of opportunities, yelling, swearing, public reprimands, other objectionable behavior. Right, so... Um, Again, like this is not meant to discourage you or make you feel rotten about teaching. Just recognize that these things happen in teaching. And hopefully in your school, you'll have lots and lots of support and understanding, caring people who you can work with. Uh, so that if ever any of these things do arise from time to time for you, that you'll be able to um, deal with them better. Or if they happen for one of your colleagues, you'll, you'll have some kind of compassion for him or her. Teachers have a right to protection from violence in their workplace. They're not required to tolerate behavior which threatens their safety and well-being. Reasonable measures must be established to achieve this goal. Harassment is not the normal, reasonable exercise of managerial authority. And what to do if you're being harassed? Well, respectful communications are key to all workplace interactions if you're being harassed. If you are able to do so, ask the harasser to stop document the incidences, seek assistance early, ask fellow teachers who are well-seasoned, experienced, and who you trust, talk to your principal if that is safe, and speak to your local ATA for advice. Seek some assistance to invoke an informal mechanism for addressing the situation if you feel that that is important. Ask about a grievance under your collective agreement or a complaint under a board policy, right? You can ask about all those different things. They'll give you a lot of advice. Uh, the person I spoke to when this was happening for me was very uh, kind and understanding. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the comedy drama from Denmark there uh, called Rita, but it's really a, a, a great um, a great series, and there's a character in there, Eric, who uh, is being terribly abused by his... Uh, Students. He's a, he's a very kind, soft-spoken man. He never raises his voice in anger. He 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 he, you know he 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 turns the other cheek a lot. He he tries to deal, um, you know, calmly with students who are disruptive. Um, but you know, he I guess because he was bullied as a child too. Perhaps he. 
perhaps he doesn't have the strong, firm um, um, manner that might ward off um, that sort of bullying uh, by students. And and one of the interesting things, I mean, he in in the in in his character and in the situations he finds himself in the in the comedy Rita um, is. You know, we get to see it play out, and how horrible, uh, horribly he's treated, and, and yet how how kind he is. Um, but then we see where the kids get it from, because uh, it's when you know he finally snaps, and he a kid has been so abusive towards him, he 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 has a moment of weakness, and he turns around and he slaps the boy in the face. Um, and then the boy goes home and complains to his parents. Then this shark fe- frenzy of parents just comes after him, and they all tear into him. And they're such a, a bunch of horrible bullies themselves. And so it's interesting, right? Like these, like there's a, there's a certain amount we can do as educators to uh, combat bullying, to teach kids about how they should never bully each other and bully other people. But you know, where do they learn this? right? Very often this is learned behavior from home and it's so hard for us as teachers to combat, you know, a a child's whole at-home upbringing when the parents an alpha, you know, a silverback, chances are, you know, these things can affect the way that students are towards others too. So, uh, now I just want to deal a little bit with how these things play out in law. Uh, I want to talk about intentional torts, like when parents attack. Uh, tort law provides that where a person intentionally inflicts harm upon another, he or she may be found liable and may be required to pay damages to compensate for loss or injury. Intentional torts include things like assault, battery, false imprisonment, defamation, nuisance, uh, and the deliberate infliction of mental suffering, right? So, um, in other words, you know, when people say nasty things, when they defame you, when they besmirch your reputation as a teacher, right? When they, they're they constantly at you, bullying you like this. Like, this is actually against the law, folks. Like, it's nothing that you should ever have to tolerate, ever. It's, 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 it's part of tort law. What about when a parent is being, uh, is being defamed online? Oh, I don't mean that. It should say, what about when a teacher is being defamed online or publicly by a parent? Sorry. So what what about that situation? Well, Brown and Zucker write that if the teacher proves that the published words are defamatory, right? The defendant, that is the parent, has the onus to prove either it's, it is true what was written or said, it was a fair comment, that means like it didn't. There was no malice behind it, uh, and it's a matter of public interest, in which I was speaking, or that it was said with qualified privilege. In other words, that the parent had a duty to say something in this particular situation. All right, so you know they have to be able to prove one of the, or you know at least one of those three things in order for the things that they say about you as a teacher not to be, you know, held liable under in, as an intentional tort. So here's just a couple cases. Uh, this Newman v. Halstead case in 2006. <clears throat> it's a rather famous court case. Uh, a woman who used to have kids in the school ran a website defaming its teachers. There were nine plaintiffs she came after. And she made serious allegations about them on her website and in online chat rooms, as well as in emails. These included a least wanted educator's rogues gallery of teachers with their names and faces posted. Right, so she really came after these teachers. So you can imagine, you know, the anxiety, too, that this caused for the teachers and the hardship, right? Having horrible things said about you on online, uh, it's hard to get rid of those things, too, right? Anyway, the court found that she did so with malice, and they awarded significant damages to the plaintiffs. So she, she was caught. She was held accountable. And then McCarran 
v. Marshall in 1999, a parent was found guilty of defamation as a result of his campaign to have an elementary school teacher removed from her classroom. He published defamatory statements about her, even making a large banner at the school about her terrible teaching. All right, so this was found unacceptable as well by the court. Okay, so that doesn't give you very many examples of court cases, but you can see how, um, you know, courts uh, in the past have, um, I mean, if you take it all the way to the court, um, how, you know, they have sided with teachers who were being treated very, very badly by uh, parents and bullied by parents. I hope that these things never happen to you folks. Um, um, and I hope that you have a good good career ahead of you um, and if if you do encounter these things I hope that they can be settled for you amenably and you can move past them and you know the experience in some way perhaps can make you uh, a better teacher and stronger thank you